So we are beginning with an interesting idea that I heard many years ago, and I actually brought it up the other the other day. Signposts in Judaism. You go to the area to sell, go to the land of Israel, you see a signpost. You were driving, you want to know where to go. It's interesting because you have it in three languages. You have it in English, you have it in Hebrew, and you have it in Arabic, Arabic as well. Because in Israel, we respect. This is a, the tourists that are speaking English. It's an international language. The Arab nations. It's all in Arabic. You can see wherever you're going, just in case they don't speak the indigenous Israeli Arabs don't speak Hebrew yet. It's there that they have also in Hebrew. Now, what's interesting to understand is this idea of signs is already a few thousand years old. In Israel, there were also signs. Let's imagine you are one of the Jews that are coming to Israel. And you want to come to the pilgrimage, you want to come to the Bet HaMikdash. And over there, the Bet HaMikdash had 10 miracles that was happening every single day. What are the 10 miracles? One of the 10 miracles is there was fire that was on the Mizbeach, on the altar, and the smoke that went up, went up in a straight line. Imagine you're that person, and you're coming there, the Shekhinah, the lights of the menorah were on constantly bright. They brightened up the whole place. The ketoret, the incense, the beautiful smell that came from the Mizbeach HaKetoret, it smelled throughout Jerusalem and beyond, all the way to Jericho and beyond. People could smell the brilliant smell of Jerusalem. It was a miraculous place. And three times a year, Jews from all over the world, they decided that they're going to come to, uh, to the Bet HaMikdash to serve God. What are the three times? They're called the three foot festivals. Shalosh Regalim. What are the three times? The three main festivals in Judaism. What are they? Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuot. Pesach is when we came out of Egypt, commemorating the time we came out of Egypt. Shavuot is when we received the Torah. And Sukkot remembers the miracles that God did for our forefathers in the wilderness by protecting us in these booths and with the clouds of glory. And three times a year the Jews would come and there would be a mitzvah. You'd come with your family, you'd come, you'd make the trek and you'd bring a special sacrifice and you spend the whole time in Jerusalem and Pesach was packed with millions of people. Millions. Josephus says how many people were there. It was packed. So now you're coming, people would come from all over the place. They would come from all over Israel. Nowadays you want to go to, to Haifa, it's a few hour drive. <laughs> In the olden days, you wanted to go from the south to the north. It's a two-week do uh, donkey drive. Two weeks. It's not, not simple. And you wanted, there was no WhatsApp. There's no quick uh, calls and find out what's the weather like, what's happening over here, what's happening over there. Every, you had to go, and you had to go with the flow. It'd take you two weeks to get there, two weeks to come back. You didn't know what was going. And perhaps you'd never been to Jerusalem. Many people had never been to Jerusalem. So how did somebody who had never been to Jerusalem know where he's going? You needed to have a signpost. So how many signposts were there leading to the, leading to the city of Jerusalem? The answer is none. Zero. Okay, let's fast forward. Let's look into the Torah. And the Torah mentions another time that there are signposts. Where are the signposts? There are signposts in the following scenario. Somebody's, God forbid, walking up a ladder. As they're walking up a ladder, they've got their tools, taking their tools with them. Somebody's walking underneath, the tools fall, and they kill this person by mistake. They kill the person by mistake. Or they're just chucking an axe into a wood, and it's going onto the wood, and a guy walks in, in and he gets killed by mistake. What happens? What's the halakha? In Judaism, in the Torah, what happens is this person has to go to what's called an Are Miklot. He flees. He runs to an Are Miklot, to a city of refuge. He runs. And the guy who died, family, they're called the Goel Adam. They're able to go chase after the guy and kill him. If he doesn't reach the city of refuge before, they're able to kill him. Without going in, I'm not going to go into the whole details. Open up a Chumash and see the Alachot. How did it work with the Betin? But at the end of the day, there were these cities of refuge which this guy needs to run to immediately. And once he's in the city of refuge, he's in a safe zone. Nobody can touch him over there. If he set foot outside, then he's back to square one. They can kill him. 
These cities of refuge, there were 48 in total, three and three, six main ones, three on this side of the River Jordan, on the west bank of the River Jordan, and three on the east bank of the River Jordan. All of it was Eretz Yisrael at the time. And 42 cities of the Levites. <coughs> That's 48 cities. And then specifically these three and these three, there were signposts for these Are Mikrat. A Mikrat, a person who needed to run, there was a signpost. And the question is, why when it comes to Jerusalem, millions of people, they want to come, they want to give their sacrifice, and they want to come and serve God, there's no signpost. Jerusalem, here you go, here you go, there. And there's a debate how the signposts were for the Are Mikrat. Was it words? Or was it just an arrow? Some people couldn't even read. The Yerushalmi says because people couldn't read, just an arrow. So people knew, oh, there's an arrow. Got to go this way, got to go that way. This is the Arei Miklat. But Jerusalem, there's no oh, Yerushalayim, no arrow, no golden arrow, nothing. What's going on? What's happening? Well, but in order to understand this important question, you need to understand a bit of the psychology of a person. When a person would commit a sin. A person commits a sin. Are they happy with the sin? Think about it. We live in a world that's, that's a temporary world. You sin one day, you enjoy it while you're sinning potentially, and then within seconds, minutes, hours, there's a regret. There's a regret. Was it really worth it? Was it worth all that energy, that effort? Was it worth it to go against my creator, what, what, what he wanted to go for my own position. So you think, hold on, what is, what is the, the benefit? The benefit was an hour, a minute, five minutes, ten minutes, this, that, the other. Temporary benefit. Person gets embarrassed. Person's embarrassed with what they do. They don't normally share their bad acts. You do something bad, you don't go and publicize it to the world. If you say something bad about somebody, and say, oh, last night I said that this guy and this guy is a terrible person, when you... It's embarrassing, you know, the, why are you saying such a thing? You don't normally publicize that you stole something. You don't normally publicize that, an, an illicit act. In, in fact, you don't want it to be publicized. The Torah cares about everybody's kavod, everybody's honor and respect. Human beings need to be respected. And throughout the whole Torah, you know, if a person chasran, passes away, the Torah, the halacha is, you have to bury him straight away. Don't wait. Don't wait. Get on with it. Bury it. Why? Because of the honor of the body, the person. The Torah is constantly giving kavod. If a person steals in the Torah, what's the halakha? The halakha is they have to pay double. They have to pay double. If they admit, they can give back what they didn't admit. You find out, they have to pay double. They stole a million pounds, they have to pay two, two million. But if they steal... Yeah, a certain animal, two different animals are mentioned in the Torah. Then they need to pay four and five. Without going into all the halachot. And the reason is because these animals require extra stealth. And sometimes, you know, like a sheep, you need to carry it. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're going to be more embarrassed or more in this. The Torah is constantly looking at a person how they're embarrassed or they're not embarrassed and here we go the person that sinned he killed somebody by accident if he were to not have signs to these are mikrat then he would have to walk in the street i mean where i'm going excuse me sir do you know where the are mikrat is and you'll be saying uh ah, you don't need the are mikrat huh who did you just kill <laughs> yeah well, well, what do you need to know about the are mikrat yeah nosy people Nudniks, they call it. Ah, go, excuse me, sir. Uh, where's the nearest array maker? Well, well, what do you want to know? What's, what's happening? People get embarrassed. So there, there's going to be a massive sign. Don't ask, you don't need to ask. Go this way, go that way, go this way. But when it comes to somebody that wanted to go to Yerushalayim, Irak Kodesh, excuse me, sir, where is Jerusalem? Wow, are you going to the Bet HaMikdash? Yeah, I'm going to the Bet HaMikdash. Phew, I wish I could come with you. I wish... May hold on a minute. If you're going, maybe I should come. Let me ask my wife. Maybe we should all go. Mitzvah, uh, mitzvah. So the Torah doesn't want there to be a sign. It wants you to speak to people. It wants you to converse. It wants you to speak and to get people involved. This is very important. 
So what we're learning now is very important. We should always respect other people. We have two times in Judaism where we are mourning. The first time we mourn earlier, a few months ago, the Sefirat HaOmer, we mourn the 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva that passed away. Lo nahagu kavod, They didn't give each other kavod. They didn't give each other the, the due respect. And then we have another time where we were mourning. And the mourning period of the three weeks. It's between Shiva Sabatamuz and Tisha B'Av. Shiva Sabatamuz, five things occurred on Shiva Sabatamuz, the 17th of Tammuz. What are the five things that occurred on the 17th of Tammuz? That means that every Jew fasts on this time. It's a very, it's a beginning of the Ben HaMetzarim. The first thing that occurred is when Moshe Rabbeinu was coming down with the tablets, he was so excited he's going to give these tablets to the written by God <coughs> Almighty to the Jewish people. He wants to come and bring them. And what are the Jews doing? They're celebrating around the golden calf. They've got an idol in which they're, they're worshipping because they miscalculated by one day that Moshe Rabbeinu is coming down. Kiboshesh, six hours, Moshe Rabbeinu, they got it wrong. They counted. So what does he do? He breaks the Luchot, the 17th of Tammuz, we fast because we could have had the Torah that was Nitzchi. That Torah, if it would have been given to us, we wouldn't be dying, there would be no death, there would be complete health, and people, complete Torah, we'd be in a perfect state. We missed it. Shiva Asabana, who can hear these words and not fast? That was the beginning. Fast forward a few hundreds, uh, hundreds of years, the Jews are now in the land of Israel, Jerusalem is surrounded by the Babylonians and then the Romans, many years later, same timing, roughly. Shiva Asa Tammuz, there's a debate whether it was Shiva or the ninth, without going into it, but we say the Shiva Asa Tammuz, there was a breach in the wall of Jerusalem. It's the second reason. It was the beginning of the downfall of Jerusalem. Imagine that bastion, Jerusalem, is such a strong hold. Hundreds of years. Have Eret Israel, 80 years, and everybody's thinking it's a strong media. Hundreds of years. Israel was a, a nation with a kingdom. And now the Babylonians have succeeded. After 410 and 420 with the Romans years to make a hole into Jerusalem. It's a sad time. The third reason is because the Tamid offering that was being offered up on a constant basis. There was a Tamid in the morning, a sacrifice in the morning and a sacrifice in the afternoon. And every day in the Beit HaMikdash, a communal sacrifice. This stopped on Shiva Sabatamuz. The Romans who were surrounding the area, they allowed them to, they gave them, they said, you want, uh, no problem, you want a lamb? No problem, we'll give you a lamb. A million dollars per lamb, because they were surrounding. Sure, we'll give you money. So, you know, the, one day they said, okay, we'll give you the money. They lowered down the money, and the Romans hired up a pig. <laughs> what do you mean? We paid you for the lamb. No, no, no. No more Mr. Nice Guy. That's it. Thank you for the million dollars, million dollars, whatever it is. Yeah, that's it. They didn't have, couldn't offer up. Apostomus made, took a Sefer Torah, and he burnt it in public. That's the fourth reason. First burning of Sefer Torah. Terrible. And the Sefer Torah had to text it. Not one second to write. It's not a printer over here. Somebody has to handwrite it. It's a Sefer Torah that was lasting for many years. It's got God's name in it. And he goes and he destroys it. And the fifth, eventually they emid, they put an idol in the Echav, in the place where God's presence rested, they put now an idol. Symbolizes the end, it's finished. That happened on the 17th of Tammuz. It's a very tough time. And then we fast forward and we get to Tisha B'Av. Three weeks later is Tisha B'Av. What happened on Tisha B'Av? Five more things. Five more tragedies. What are the tragedies that happened on Tisha B'Av? Number one, the spies. They came back. They gave a bad report about the beautiful land of Israel. People started to cry in the time of the desert. Moshe is around. He said, what do you mean? I'm going to take you to the land of milk and honey. I'm going to take you. God is going to protect us. And everybody started crying. There's panic. The whole, everyone crying. Oh, what are we going to do? The end of the world. I said, you fool. It's not the end of any world. It's the end of your world now that you're crying. Oh, our, ki our kids. I blamed it. What are we going to do? Our future. We're going to have no future. So I said, you're worried about your future. I was going to give you the best future. You're not going to have, you're not going to have a present right now. You're going to die. But your kids are going to have a future now. It's yourself. The ones that you were worried about, I'm going to make sure. 
because we shouldn't panic, we should have Emunah. 12 spies, 10 gave a bad report, 2 gave a good report, and people were crying. Hashem said, you're crying for no reason. Every year I'm going to give you Tisha B'Av to cry. I'm going to give you a reason. Give him a reason. So what happens next? That's the first bad thing that happened. And they were, there was a decree that all these people had to die in the wilderness. That's why we spent 40 years in the wilderness. We didn't spend 40 years in the wilderness because we didn't have what, ways. We knew very well where Eretz Israel is. People get confused. People are not learned enough. They say, Rabbi, oh, the Jews were lost in the wilderness for 40 years. We weren't lost in any wilderness. We knew where we were. We followed God's cloud from place to place. When the cloud stopped, we stopped. That's what the Torah says. We got punished for 40 years in the wilderness because of a sin that we did. Sometimes a person doesn't realize, oh, why is this happening? Why am I stuck in the mud? Stuck in the mud because of the actions that you did. Not because you're lost. Second thing that happened, the first Bet HaMikdash was destroyed on Tisha B'Av. Third thing that happened, the second Bet HaMikdash was destroyed on Tisha B'Av. Fourth thing that happened, the city of Betar, after the Bet HaMikdash got destroyed, people, many people, they went to a city called Betar, and it became the new metropolis of the world, of the Jewish world. The Romans came afterwards, they destroyed it, they decimated, killed hundreds of thousands of Jews, and they destroyed the city. To mean there's no more, we don't want you anymore, that's it's the end of Judaism, the end of Israel's rule. And the fifth thing is eventually they plowed over the place of the Kodesh Kodashim, of the Holy of Holies. They plowed over to show this is going to be farmland. It's no longer God's holy place. We don't want anyone to remember. What, is, what, did we, what do these enemies do? What do the enemies do? They come, they destroy everything they can in Judaism to show that there was never any Jews here. We don't want there to be any Jews. You go to Spain. Spain had oh, hundreds of thousands of Jews. It was the center of the Jewish world. The great Rishonim were all in Spain. What do we have now <coughs> left of them? They got exiled in 1492, taken away with expulsion. Get out, all the Jews. Either you convert, you get killed, or you get out. 14 and they got out. So what's left of the day? Can you go and see the museum? Go and see the museum, what's left. Where are the artifacts? For, from hundreds of years. Why? Because they destroyed as much as they can. That's why we don't want any remnants. That's why it's so difficult to find remnants. It's very difficult. It's constant chasing, constant difficulty. Where did it emanate from? Tisha B'Av. So what are we doing now? We are in between Shiva Asa Tammuz and Tisha B'Av. The 17th of Tammuz. The five tragedies here and the five tragedies here. See the similarity? Where did it all start? The golden calf. Moshe comes down with the Ten Commandments. Five here and five here. He comes down and he breaks the Ten Commandments. There's a break. The five over here, when you look at the Ten Commandments, deal with God, us and God. And the five over here deal with us and other humans, interpersonal relationship. It's broken. The connection between us and God is broken. The connection between us and other human beings is connection. The whole thing is broken. But alas, there's always a time to fix. There's always a tikkun olam. There's always a time that a Hadith Hu said there will be a fix. There will be a fix. Ben time we're Ben Hametzarim between the two straits. These three weeks are called Ben Hametzarim, but there will be a fix. In fact, the rabbis tell us when, when the Jews were making the golden calf, they came to, to Aaron. They said, Aaron, where's, where's your brother? We're worried. He said, Don't worry, he's coming tomorrow. What well, tomorrow? We need now. We need action. We we we're in the middle of the desert. We don't have any any being anybody to help us. He said, Okay, collect gold. And he said, collect God, there'll be a festival for God tomorrow. He wanted to push them off. Tomorrow, I know my brother's potentially coming tomorrow, I'll push off as much as, but they pulled it so fast, quick, 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 quick. What did he mean, so the Farshim, the rabbis explained, eventually, Shiva Asabatamuz will become a Chag. Chag la Hashem Machar. Chag, it will become a festival, Machar in the future. Now, we're at the end of days. Clear. It's clear. There's never been a generation in which you can go from here to Israel in four hours. It just doesn't work. When has that ever existed? It's never existed. There's never been a generation in which you can speak to somebody 10,000 miles away instantly. It doesn't exist. There's never been a generation in which you can beam people up to space. 
there's never been a generation which you can take the things that we take for granted so simply you want some water you just switch on a tap and you have it at your feet there's never been a generation of central heating never been a generation that can see so well that can hear so well that can be so strong it doesn't even we're at we're at the pinnacle of humanity over here this is the time and this time is the time we get challenged the most because the Yetzirah knows that it's wishy-washy we're on the doorstep we're on the doorstep of the Gula, and this is when the challenges come this is the year of the challenges these are the years of the challenges and the strong people have to stand up take a deep breath in and out take a stop take a pause because the revolt is in charge no president no prime minister god almighty is in charge he's got the way and we've got to be believe simple micromanagement little things putting on to fill in in the morning putting on the extra city being nice to human beings no matter where they're from no matter what denomination they are who are they are bring them together be happy be a be a positive person realize that Kaddush Baruch Hu is everywhere not to be a Borbir Shuta Rabin once one person came to Rabbi Yisrael Salanta Rabbi Yisrael Salanta was walking he sees a guy the guy's walking opposite him and he's like this Santa says, excuse me, sir. He says, yeah. He says, mm, what's wrong? A big rabbi. Yeah, mm. He says, I understand you might be going through a difficult moment. Yeah? And I wish everything should go well. But you should know that your face is a bor, Bereshut Harabim. It's a pit in a public area. And anyone can fall in it. Meaning, your face is expressing difficulty but why should i be affected you're going to make me fall down as well if you're upset and i see you upset then i'm going to get upset how do we translate that in nowadays very simple you're driving away yeah some guy is having a difficult day and he's beeping away at you so what do you do okay first maybe you're calm but eventually being like it's going crazy like what do you you're stuck at a traffic jam it's nothing so you beep it's a boy the guy's beeping so you're beeping with it. you had a difficult day so i have to have a difficult day now and then you have a difficult day you come home and then <laughs> she has a difficult day and he has a difficult day and it's mashpia so what's our voda? what do we have to know in these three weeks we have to know in these three weeks why it started these five and five and we have to concentrate we have to concentrate we have to make that aliyah in the concentration and when we make that concentration we have to understand the signposts are there the signposts are there to help people that have sinned. There are no signposts when it comes to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is about passing on the positivity to others. And that's what we need to do. This is our Avodah in the three weeks is to understand we are lacking the Beit HaMikdash. There's a special mitzvah that Rizal says to say Tikkun Chatzot. Tikkun Chatzot, not only in the night time but also after Mincha time after Mincha time, to mourn over the lack of the Beit HaMikdash. There's the two sides to the Beit HaMikdash. There's interpersonal relations and there's our relationship with God. How is our relationship with God? We're mourning. Three weeks we have to mourn, but at the end of the day, I don't have that spirituality. I acknowledge I don't have that spirituality. And one day we will have that spirituality. One day we'll look back and we'll say, wow, how did I live in such a physical domain if life was is now full of so much spirituality and I'm, I'm having such a connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But that connection depends on how we build it in this physical world. If we build it in the physical world, then we'll be able to gain from it in the spiritual world. Be'ezat Hashem, Shuzi Semachot. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.